uh, for me, uh, just a couple of videos for you. I went through this Remington 1100 semi-automatic 12 gauge shotgun where I went and re-blued it. Now during the, the greasing, the rust removing, and the perma-blowing process, each step goes through so quick that by the time you're done it, you have enough time to walk to where it is you're going to rinse the chemicals off, come back, check everything, dry it off the whole nine yards before I can even have time to go record it. So for me to clean it and record, and me being new to this entire process, I don't have the equipment to do so to be able to just let the camera sit safely somewhere and just observe the area. Uh, than to go through and explain it all. So I figured I'd take the time to go through, obviously, the degreasing and cleaning. Two, three, four times, depending upon how much you uh, go through. And again, I don't know if it's going to show up here. Even though it's blue, you could kind of see a color change here, something going on here, and then... Hmm, I thought I had enough light. But there's some sort of like pattern that's in there even though it's blued and oiled and cleaned up it still has its flaws and I've literally done this barrel twice this barrel completely twice and started to go back on a third time to try and blue it without uh, having it to where it rust and obviously when you get into the rib vents I literally, that's what caused me to do it a second time, and I even had to come back a third time just to remove rust that still formed in underneath, like where the, my thumbnail touches here, like, uh, the, the bottom of that ridge, rib vent, the top of the barrel, the whole side piece where the, where the rib vent is welded, to the the barrel I had to go through again to clean that up and I had my little tiny one of this and I've gone through three of these just to do that entire underside to strip it back down to bare metal and you know treat it you know q-tips 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 just to make sure I get rid of all the rust before I do the next phase. Then I, definitely, I, you know, the strangest thing is, is to clean the degreaser off, to clean the rust remover off. You're going to do the one thing that every gun ownership tells you not to do is to put it underneath running water. It makes no sense. Uh, but you got to consider if you're using clean running water, you're wiping the contaminants away, you immediately dry it off. So that way water doesn't sit there and cause the rust to happen again. And especially everything with the perma blue, because the perma blue is a controlled rust. This bluing is a controlled rust. When they say two minutes, uh, max, rinse it off, scrub it off. It literally means you're going to need some sort of rag or nylon brush to rub the perma blue off with running water to stop its rusting otherwise and that's probably why i had so much rust under there is i couldn't clean it off properly even if i have like a pressured sprayer sprinkler like thing from your faucet sink kind of hit it with a little bit more force it's just not enough to get the chemical off <clears throat> so a lot of this happened. This here is a 400 grit. Yeah, 400 grit. Uh, that's your rough stuff. My understanding, depending upon who you talk to, this is between 900 to 1200 grit. Uh, very fine. Uh, so it's one of those things where, again, you're going to have to rub this stuff down to get the rust off and to get down to that clean metal or at least as clean as possible without taking several thousandths of an inch of steel off, uh, which is, you know, for a gun, especially in certain areas, like the entire action in there, you start stripping off too much there, it can make things not sit right, thus not shoot right. Um, 
and especially since when you get into the gas system you know how do I clean that out and not put bluing in there and then as I go and rinse it make sure it's cleaned out enough because again if corrosion happens in here your seals for your gas system fail especially since it's a semi-automatic all semi-automatics have some sort of gas system uh, for their recalling action um, so and if you think about your AR, that little gas tube coming from the barrel up to your bolt to throw the bolt back, gas system. You know, how do you clean it, care for it, but don't degrade the seals, reducing your effectiveness. Those are all those things you have to consider. Uh, and again, the whole purpose for this, even if it's not perfect, even if I could drop 200 bucks and have someone at a gun shop do a proper bluing that's far superior to mine, I want to make sure it's blued. I've done it. I'm learning this. It's not going to be perfect. So yes, I might have to do this again two years from now. But at least I'm learning it and not just paying somebody. Um, you know, there could be a thought that me doing this enough will degrade the quality of the gun. Well, maybe to a point, yes. And that's one of those things I have to learn. And for me, I want to do this. This is what I want to do. Uh, again, not going to become a real gunsmith where I could go and rebuild from scratch and some spare parts. You know, turn a Mosin Nagant from some Russian rimmed round to a 270 shooting rifle with a complete barrel placement. No, I'm not going in that direction. It's not what I want to do. Uh, but I want to be able to use the guns I have, care for them, preserve them, and can continue on shooting. And these, this is why I'm coming to this to kind of show you and explain things. And especially since this one has the scroll work, where's my little... It's a nylon brush and a brass brush. The brass I had to use to get some gunk that was down in there, but have to be gentle enough not to scrape the metal apart. So you see scroll work and these lovely scratch marks all over the place. But to get the main gunk out of there. And especially when you get from the rust removing to the perma bluing, I don't use the brass anymore because what I'm concerned with is gone. And now I just want to make sure regular dirt or something is out of there. And especially getting some friction in there to clean out uh, the chemicals to make sure they don't rust. And yes, that's why I had to go back another time is because I had rust all over this side and a little bit on the other side. And it formed here in the scroll work because the chemicals weren't cleaned out the first go round uh, after the perma blue. So the perma blue continued to create the rust action. So the next day, boom, full blown rust. Then I had to go back to square one just in this area. And that's why this one here has, I, again, they're not showing up on this, but I can see all sorts of patterning going on even though it's blued it's not a solid consistent color it's not solid green it's like comparing that green can to this you can you can see with the naked eye better than the, with my camera uh, phone is showing me uh, and I could probably take some pictures maybe they'll pop up and I could throw it at the end of the video but hope that explains some things have a good day